All right, geometry 10-1, last chapter, compound probability. Let's take a look at it. Uh, first, we just have a few definitions to go over. First being compound events. These are pretty simple. A compound event is an event that is made up of two or more events. Some of that compound event is when you have two or more events and you're trying to find the probability of either some of these happening or all of them, the and, the or, things like that. Independent events. Independent events is two events that have no effect on each other. Sorry about that. Two events that have no effect on each other. Let me, this is messy. That have no effect on each other. So, for example, if I said, hey, what's the probability of, you know, if I had the, the breakfast options of having cereal or Pop-Tarts, and I had shirt options, or let's say shoe options of having boots or shoes, if I eat Pop-Tarts or boots or eat cereal and boots or cereal and shoes, these events don't, they don't have any effect on each other, right? These are completely independent events from one another. Let's define dependent events. Dependent events are two events that do have an effect to their. Okay, so how could an event have effect on each other? Well, let's say that, well, let's look at our next page and there'll be an example there. Aha! So, problem number one says choose a number from 12 tiles and then spin a spinner. Is this independent or dependent? This is independent, right? Meaning, if I choose number one through 12 and I get seven, this, the fact that I chose seven has nothing to do with if I spin you know, a, a, a red, a blue, or a green on a spinner or something like that. It has nothing to do with it. They're completely independent events from one another. Uh, let's look at the next example. Pick one card from a set of 15 sequentially numbered cards. So sequentially just means the card numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to 15. If I hold that in my hand, I don't replace it, and I pick another card, mm, these are dependent events. Why are they dependent? Because... If on the first thing I pick a 7, then out of, the, out of the 15 cards, I've lost the 7. It's not there anymore. I can't pick it again. So on my next pick, uh, you know, I pick another card. This is going to depend on the fact of whatever that first card I picked because I will no longer be able to pick it if I've picked it already. Let's move on. Independent events. So independent events. If... If A and B are independent, so if we have two independent events, like the spinner and the cards or whatever it is, then the probability of P and B happening is just the product of them two. So for example, uh, this, is, this is basically the fundamental counting principle. Let's look right here. So desk has 15 red pens, 6 blue pens, 3 black pens, 24 silver paper clips, and 16 white paper clips. What's the probability of event A, out of my pens, I pick a blue one, and out of my paper clips... I pick a white one. Well, what's the probability of picking a blue pen? No, well, that would be six out of how many pens are there? Uh, 12, 14 pens. Times how many white paper clips do I have? 16 over how many total paper clips do I have? Uh, 40. If I multiply these two together, let me reduce this. Um, so I have six over 14, so this is. 3 sevenths times 18 over, or 16 over 40, it's reduced to 2 fifths. Then my total odds is 6 over 35, which equals approximately 17.1%, 0.171, if you want a decimal. So, the question was, what is the probability that I select a blue pen white paper clip? And that is just the product of these two events. So the product of me picking a blue pen is 6 out of 14, 14 pens, 6 blue ones. The probability for event B is there's 40 paper clips total and 16 of them are white. So I multiply those two things together, I just reduce my fractions first, and I get that there's a 17% chance 
of those two events happening. All right, let's move on. Mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive. So if A and B are mutually exclusive, what does that mean? Mutually exclusive means that they can't happen at the same time. So things that can be mutually exclusive is if I roll a die once and said, what's the odds of me getting a two and a five? I can't. It's impossible. I can't get two numbers off one dice. They cancel each other out. So if A and B are mutually exclusive, I can't find the probability of both of them occurring at the same time. There's a 0% chance because I cannot roll one die and get a two and a five. It's impossible. That's why it's a 0% chance. But if they're mutually exclusive and I say, hey, what's the probability of getting two or a five? Then I would just add those two probabilities together. Are we going to do an example? Let's do it. Okay. So let's say at a school there's, a, uh, there's two events. The probability um, of students playing basketball is 28%, and 24% of the students are on a swim team. So I said, what's the probability? And these are mutually exclusive. A student can only play one sport at a school. So even though they're mutually exclusive, I say, hey, what's the probability of playing on the basketball team or being on a swim team, right? I'm just going to add, this is a probability of A, plus the probability of B. So uh, that would just be 28% plus 24% equals a total of a 52% chance that a student will be doing one or the other. Pretty simple. Lastly, let's look at overlapping events. Overlapping events. If A and B are overlapping, what, what does overlapping mean? Well, overlapping means that part of, the pro, pro, part of the probability of this happening includes a little part of this happening. So let's look at this example. Let's say that there's a probability, what's the probability of on a dice rolling an even number or rolling a multiple of three? Well, let's just describe these and then we'll look at the thing. An even number includes... 2, 4, and 6. Those are all my even numbers. A multiple of 3 would include 3 or 6. We're talking about a 6-sided dice, so these are all our options. So the probability of, of uh, rolling an even number or multiple of 3 includes these things. Now, do you see how they both have a 6? That's where they overlap. Overlap in, huh? Overlap being is what I meant to say. That's, that's where they overlap, is that they each have this, this 6 that is an even number and it's a multiple of 3. So how do we find that then? The probability of an A or B, so of rolling an even number, or rolling a multiple of three, would be the sum of these two things minus the fact uh, that they both happen. So let's just look what that means. So the probability of an even uh, an even number is three out of six, plus the probability, well, this is backwards, actually. Let me just, let me say. Let me just rewrite it then. Well, it's fine. No, I'll rewrite it. The probability of A or B, when we're talking about overlapping events, equals the probability of A plus the probability of the second event, B, so minus from that the probability of both of them. So um, if I want to know what the probability of an even or, I'm going to write M3, it's a multiple of 3. Uh, so the probability of an even happening is 3 out of 6, plus the probability of a multiple of 3 happening is 2 out of 6. And I'm going to subtract from that the probability of A and B, and that's 1 out of 6, right? It's just the 6. There's one number that is in both of them, both A and B. So 3, 6 plus, oh, this should say 6 here. 3, 3, 6 plus 2, 6 is 5, 6. And 5, 6 minus 1, 6 is 4, 6. There we are. If I can reduce that, that there is a 2 to 3 ratio of the probability of rolling an even number or rolling a multiple of 3. Good luck in your book work. Talk to you next time.